So I'm going to be chairing it, I'm also going to be judging it. And as you know from your training in your classrooms, there are three categories. You get a mark out of 10 for strategy. That's how well you make and take points of information. Uh, how well you work as a team, whether you decline or accept, depending on who you're speaking opposite. And uh, whether you make rebuttals. If you do all of those things, then you can get top marks out of 10 for strategy. You'll also get marked for content. That's the quality of your speech, what you say, how well you feel, your arguments, using mess, using uh, language devices, rhetoric. And finally, you get a mark out of 10 for style. If you've got a, a really charismatic personality and presence, if you're interesting and engaging, if you do things with your voice, you, you use pitch and pace, and you sound interesting and engaging, that will get you marks for style. So without further ado, um, oh, I'm going to ask... I'm gonna, well, actually, do you know what? Why not? Let's should we welcome Elijah as our chair. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, our fellow teachers and pupils. Today we will be debating about. I'd like to introduce the first speaker of the team proposition, Miss England. Round of applause, please. Thank you, thank you. Never have I been more excited to stand up here. Good afternoon, years eight and year nine. Uh, this house believes that teachers should be replaced by artificial intelligence. And we would like to define that notion. Uh, firstly, I'd like to state that by teachers, we argue that we mean all lead teaching staff, not teaching assistants and not SLT. They can stay upstairs. By AI, we mean creating robotics to work within the classroom. That is correct. You could be taught by a robot. I would like to introduce my esteemed colleagues. Uh, speaker 1 is Mr Blake Moore, and he will be arguing the moral reasons why it is morally critical that we are replaced and we replace all teachers with artificial intelligence. Speaker 2 is Ms Petrova and she will be explaining the money argument and why financially it is imperative we replace all teachers with artificial intelligence. And last, but by no means least, we have Ms Ahima, our summary speaker. for why we must replace teachers with AI and why we must do it now. My first point that I would like to make is the educational benefits this motion will bring. Teachers will be in the unprecedented position of being retrained to take the role of a TA, pastoral, caring, supportive role. Teachers will still be in the classroom. You will still have an adult in the classroom, fear not but supporting you. And it's in a role that can address students' social and emotional issues. Teaching isn't just about trigonometry and spag. And it's preparing our students, it's also repair, sorry, preparing our students, preparing you for real life. And helping students to navigate the complex process of growing up. Can we do this? Accept it. You are just saying that, that teaching is to prepare you for real life. We are going to be te taught by robots. In real life, we are not going to be instructed by robots. So how is this anything to do with real life? That, sir, is a very good point. You will be taught by robots, 
Unlike currently in the real life, but if you've seen how quickly technology is progressing, it won't be long before your employers are robots, etc. Um, but can we do this preparing? Can we do it if we are just preoccupied with the pressures of GCSEs and the ranking? No, we cannot. We are left banging on about full stops and tricolons and it's tiring and unrewarding. This isn't why we went into teaching. We are overworked, overwhelmed and over it. And on that note, I would like to urge you to vote Team Pro. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Mr. Ngo, for that wonderful speech. And I'd like to introduce the first people of Team Opposition, Rappalos. Wonderful speech. Thank you, Mr. Ngo. Thank you. I'm Rappalos. I'm the first speaker for Team Opposition, meaning I disagree with the motion that this house to replace teachers with artificial intelligence. Now, I'm going to start off by rebutting the first speaker for Team Proposition, Ms. England. Now, I understand your points that, you know, it, the uh, robots are very important and, you know, it won't be a matter of time that when our employers will, will be robots. However, we have to take into account that teachers are the, are the ones who can uh, give that support to students. They can make a connection with students that maybe, te that maybe a robot might not necessarily have. Now, onto my point. Um, actually, first I'm going to introduce my team. I, I, will, I will be speaking on safety. Second speaker, David, will be speaking on uh, the economic argument. First speaker, Bess, will be doing the moral argument. And Howard will be summarizing. Now, on to my point. Trust. It's a very key part in our education. Every teacher is DPS checked, meaning they haven't committed any crimes or, any, or anything bad, so they can't teach students. Now, it's important that we trust our teachers because it means that we are able to have a, a great and safe learning environment. Is that good? Uh, you say that the teachers have been DPS checked and have no correct but the robots have been DPS checked, so surely they're just the same. Well, that's something I'm going to move on to. Now, when, we, we, then when you have robots taking the place of teachers, that can cause a very serious issue. The lack of, uh, the now resulting lack of teachers when you take away students, uh, take away teachers, it causes a, a rift. And teachers are normally the ones who are in the playgrounds checking for, for uh, safety. If there's a fight that happens outside, there will be a teacher who's breaking up that fight. A robot can't have that critical thinking skills like a teacher does. Is that good? Um, you were saying that teachers are very important because we still need them to look after the kids and support them, but the motion says that the way we define the motion is that we still have teaching staff in the classroom, they just won't be needing the actual teachers, so we still have the support for students. Well, yes, but I have stated that when, but, you know, if you're going to be taking away the teachers and having teaching assistants, that, that still means there'll be a reduction in teachers. That still means there is still going to be less safe. You know, teach it, uh, we can't have teachers, uh, so I think you'll all be aware of uh, the recent uh, shooting that happened yesterday. Now, the lack of teachers means that we can't stop, stop this from happening as easy. If there's a fight, if there's someone with a gun or there's someone with a knife coming in, the lack of teachers means this can't be easily stopped. If, te if our parents can't trust us to go into school because of the lack of teachers, meaning that you know, there's more likely to be a big incident in school, it means they'll be taking us away from you, and it means the formative years of your lives will be taken away because you can't, because the teachers are not trusted due to their lack. Thank you. Thank you, uh, sir, for these kind of opposing statements. Now I'd like to introduce the second speaker of the proposition, Mr. Gaper. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello. Okay. 
First of all, I would like to rebuttal Rathalos and state that um, just because there's fewer teachers in the classroom, that does not mean that there are not adults about. It does not necessarily mean an equivocal replacement of teachers for AI. It simply just means that they would not be teaching specifically. Okay, my point. I am talking about the moral benefits of AI replacing teachers, and I believe that morally, everyone, all of you, all of you, all people, all children, deserve a fair education. You deserve the best education, and you deserve a consistently taught education. But in reality, there is human bias, and a moral bias. Not every school has the same opportunities or facilities. Do you think the private school that Boris Johnson went to is the same as this school? No. In some private schools, students are given personal laptops to use on a daily basis. It's theirs to keep. We don't have that. Many schools don't have that. Maybe some have Do you think? So you're saying by having AI in the classrooms means that every student would have their own personal laptop? and have increasingly better conditions just because you're adding a robot to the classroom? No, sir, I do not. I am stating that there are inequalities, and I will reach my point as to why that is this week. Okay, so, do you think that private schools have as much cover as schools like this in the inner city? No! Inner city schools have 70% more cover teachers and supply lessons than they do in private schools. And do you think that, inner school, look, that private schools have as many exclusions as inner city schools. No, no of course not. They're all, you're three times more likely to be excluded, specifically if you are black, Caribbean, and male, than you are to be white. This is a thing. So, does this mean that... Does this mean that teachers are bad? No, it absolutely does not, and I will explain why in a second. What it does mean, though, is that it means that we need an alternative solution. So, teachers, me, I am tired. Miss England is tired. Miss Petrova is tired. Miss Ahima is tired. We are tired. Do you think that we, on a Monday morning, are as capable of teaching at our highest capacity as we are on a Friday, period five? No. Mistakes will be made. We will be slightly less capable of putting our absolute effort into being patient and calm. We might forget things or miss things out. We may not have a chance to go over things in the same detail we would have on a Monday morning. AI does not have this problem. AI is completely impartial. AI is unbiased. AI is a much better choice for teaching, specifically reducing teachers to the role of all pastoral support, where they can better help and be better rested. In conclusion, I genuinely believe thank you, that teachers are overworked, overwhelmed, and over it entirely. Thank you. And in order to ensure that all of you, all children, sorry, thank you, get the best possible education for the future, I urge you to vote for Team Proposition. Thank you very much. Or team opposition, David. Hello, my name is David, and I am the second speaker of side opposition. This means I disagree with the motion this house would replace teachers with AI. Firstly, I would like to rebut the first and the second speakers of the proposition team. Miss England, you are saying that. Teachers are not just about stress and not about exams. But robots are going to do that more because they lack emotion. So you're just going to be there with an emotionless thing in front of you, just, te just teaching you so and so what you have to keep in your head. Won't that be more stressful for the students? And Mr. Blakemore, you are saying that there are, in that there are inequalities with students and that it can be unconscious bias. But that is false information that you're presenting to our audience because there are still going to be people who are programming this AI and they can be still the same race of people who are like the teachers in cooperation. Because who said, who's, who's coding this AI? Who said that there's going to be no bias? You only said that there are robotics that work in the classroom. 
So we decline it. Now my point is on the economic argument. And I'm talking about how it will be cheaper and it will be better for our financial standards to keep teachers how they are now. And also to remind myself about Mr. Blakemore, your point. You're talking about your teachers. You're tired. You're tired. You want to read. You want to read. So I'm afraid, just be aware of that. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to, uh, so I'd like to now go to our third speaker of the proposition, Miss Pedrova. Short term, if we move towards AI, things are going to be able to replace 
We're not saying that you should switch to the day. You can talk to the two guys all the next 5, 10, maybe even 15 years, because the truth is AI is still evolving a lot. And so, yes? So what I'm saying is that we'll stop wasting money on teachers and instead waste it on AI that don't even exist yet, diverting funds, perhaps for the next 50, 100 years, to develop AI that can do the same job teachers already do? That's a very good question and very well phrased, Tess. Um, I would say no, not really. So at the moment, there is a lot of wastage in terms of teaching. There are a lot of things that we teachers do which could actually be done by machine already. So we can think of things like educate and Sparks, which I know will bring a lot of um, frowns around the room. But one of the reasons why Sparks brings out so many frowns around the room is because Sparks is really, really good at making things just challenging enough for you guys to be able to keep on learning. Now, it's much more efficient to have one program, which is bought once, to then um, adapt learning for, you know, 180 year eight students, than to have teachers make up resources every single day for all of these children, given that they're all at slightly different levels. So yes, it's not there yet, but we are slowly developing in that direction. We started there, so um, you know it's just a matter of time. So long as you balance things out, I feel like that will be perfectly fine. Thank you very much, for the proposition. Um, okay, I'd like now to uh, hand over to the third speaker of the opposition, Bess. Hi, I'm Beth and I'm the third speaker for Team Opposition, meaning I disagree with the motion this house will replace teachers with AI. Now I'd like to start with some rebuttal. Firstly for your whole team, you've talked about how you teachers are tired, you're overworked, and I agree. But to be honest, we are living in a cost of living crisis, we are living with an environmental crisis. The next generation you're going to have to deal with. It isn't you that's going to be suffering because of this, it's us. It's us that are getting impacted by the decisions you are making. Why should you be worried about you teachers being tired? So you're going to get rid of teachers and put AI that could be even more damaging to students? I put it to the floor that team proposition is acting in their own self-interest, not in the interest of the general public. Accepted. Uh, right, uh, you're saying that we are setting up you guys to suffer next. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Absolutely. Thank you very much for that articulate speech. Yes, I won't take it personally as one of your teachers, but we are technophobes. Um, and I would li like instead to hand over to these guys. So what I'd like to do is take some speeches from the floor. What would be great, um, Miss, if you could hand over to Miss Byron and Miss Garland, and they've got some mics. So they'll, if you put your hand up and I select you, then if you could just speak into the microphone, can I ask you to stand up? Say your name and say whether your point or question is for team proposition or for team opposition. Okay? So uh, over yeah, at the very back, please. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, mine is for uh, proposition. And um, Miss England, I wanted to say that um, some. What, what would you think if some students, when they reach the age of teaching, will actually like the learning experience of teaching? But if you replace um, teachers with robots at this stage, by that time they won't be able to um, learn how to teach. And by teaching is not just teaching students how to understand or learn something, it's also learning how to engage with kids. This will also help you when you're a parent to speak to your child and learn how to associate yourself with your child. But if you replace... Yeah, anyone for opposition? Uh, my name is Evan and I have something for opposition. opposition. You said that... Uh, this is opposition. opposition. <laughs> what about Evan? We'll take your point and then we'll get two more for opposition. You said that teachers um, need to rest for the like, laptop needs to charge, the uh, other things need to charge as well. So say again. The AI needs to charge you like. AI, yes. AI does. My name is Axel, and I have a question for opposition. Yeah. Um, what if like a teacher is like racist or homophobic to a student? What are you going to do then? Because like a, a robot can't be like programmed to be racist or homophobic or transphobic to a student, but a person. Okay. My name is Devon. Um, Hold on a sec. Shh. Thank you. Uh, so you said that the robots can have the same critical thinking as adults do, but, but if there's a fight and um, uh, students are obviously fighting, like, would the robot think to, um, to stop the fight? Okay, so, so a robot could be programmed to critically think, that's what you're saying. Okay. Thank you for those excellent applause, which is going to be dealt with by the summary school. I'd now like to hand over to Team Opposition to sum up the points of their team. Okay. Yeah, um, let me just check the time. Okay, you get one minute. Each team, I'll give you one minute to have a quick chat with your team in response to the floor speakers. The time starts now. Time both teams, thank you very much. Okay. Now we will go to the opposition to our summary speaker, Hala, who is going to sum up the points for her team. Thank you, Hala. Round of applause, please. Hello, my name is Hala, and I'm the summary speaker for the opposition team. Firstly, I'd like to um, start off by answering some of the floor questions. So one of the floor questions that was that AI can't be racist or homophobic. But actually, I think that you're getting it wrong because AI is biased. It can be made by somebody which can program certain things. And we've probably all seen that an example of this where a company actually categorically um, programmed AI to only, um, only employ um, certain people. Well, that just shows that AI can be um, biased and can be controlled by somebody. And also, to answer another question, AI can, somebody said AI can be programmed to, to make critical ideas, but well, that's not how AI actually works. And I'm not really going to go into too much detail on that since I only have limited time to speak about my team and how good we are compared to the teachers. So, firstly, I'd like to, um, firstly, I'd like to reinforce the, um, the motion. This house would replace teachers with AI. And we're saying that human life should be over AI incompetence. Firstly, our first speaker, Rapala, said how um, robots don't have critical thinking, which answers one of the questions said before. He said that a reduction of teachers leads to an increase of danger. If we remove the teachers that are in the situation, you're saying that AI can maybe stop a, be programmed to stop a fight that happens, which is one of the things said before. But how can an AI be programmed to literally stop a fight? If there are two people having a fight, how is an AI or a robot meant to come
come and separate that without getting broken itself. We're saying here that a reduction of teachers will lead to an increase of danger. And I'm sure that not all of you want to live in a world where there's lots of danger in your playground because AI is not going to be able to solve, to solve that, only teachers will. And now to our second point, David. David said the economic point. He said that it's cheaper and better to keep teachers as teachers. And he said that AI costs lots of money. How many of us have lessons where we don't have glue sticks, we don't have pens, and that our teachers aren't able to give us things that we need to have for our education? Well, if we're invested in AI, if we're going to spend all the money we need on resources that we need in our lessons, then we're going to be limited in the resources we have to do our work, to do our studies, things that you guys are permitted via AI, which is not going to be possible, because AI is not what's going to give us this um, money and pens to um, money to get by these pens, AI is what's going to be limited and reducing the money we have to do this. And this is also going to be reducing the money that we have to spend on healthcare, infrastructure, other things in the world, because we'll be spending that on AI to teach students, when we already have teachers to teach students, so we don't have to waste our money on them, rather than um, using money on these useful things such as healthcare. And finally, our third speaker, uh, Beth, she said the moral point. She said that you want to be wasting time um, demoting teachers. Well, that's what I want to say, actually. By saying that you're going to be t changing teachers and making them TAs, you're going to be um, demoting them practically. And I think that you guys are going to just be feeling sorry for yourselves. Because many of you may have a passion of teaching, but you're going to be limiting this teaching, limiting yourself in the field of English like most of you. You're mostly English teachers. You're going to be reducing this English time and actually going to be doing this stuff with other children. Well, thank you. I hope that you understand that in our world we value human life, whereas in your world, you guys are prioritizing and putting a blatant disregard for human life itself. Thank you and I hope you fit it. Thank you very much, Howard, for that professional summary. And now, finally, I would like to call upon the legendary Miss Nima to close this debate with her summary for team proposition. Round of applause, team. Thank you very much. I would like to summarize what we have spoken about. It's been a very tricky subject, and I think that some of the points that the opposition team have made have been quite interesting but I would like to remind you of what Team Proposition have said. Now, I think we must acknowledge that the world is changing and it is changing very rapidly. And instead of us shunning technology, we should be able to embrace it. Now, one of the questions that we had from the floor was about the fact that we would be having a massive change if we replace teachers with AI. But if the last two years have shown us anything, it is that you are resilient and you can adapt to change very quickly. It is, it is this, and whilst it may not be the norm now, we understand that it can easily become the norm and become a, a time and a space for a better future for children. Now, one of the things we talked about was the fact that um, robots are in fact safer because they cannot commit crimes. So, you will be in safer hands if you were taught by artificial intelligence instead of having staff members and teachers in the space, in, in the room with you. And one of the things we talked about was the programming and the bias. But it is easier to manage bias of a single code within an artificial intelligence than to manage the bias of thousands of teachers. And that is something that is so important to ensure that there is equity amongst all of you in the future. It is a guarantee of consistency and fairness having AI. And isn't that what we want? Isn't it what we protest for? And one of the points made by the opposition was something along the lines of a teacher's job being easy. And why not allow AI to do it better? An artificial intelligence teacher in the room with you means that there will be no space for mistakes. That piece of intelligence will never be overworked, overwhelmed, or over it because they will be able to teach you in the very best way possible. The cycle then can be broken, okay? And I feel that, as um, the opposition team said, that we were speaking in the best interest of teachers. But I can put it to you that the opposition spoke in their best interest. And while the teachers are saying that teachers should be replaced by artificial intelligence, the reason that we are saying that is because of the fact that we can look to the future for you and know what it could be like. We have been children, and we are now adults, and we are telling you that the workload is unmanageable. 
and we do not want that to happen to you. We want the world to be a better place and for that to happen, we need to ensure that you are taught and trained in the very best way possible so that the future can be brighter than it is as it stands. I feel that a lot of the points that were made by the opposition team were quite hyperbolic and emotionally manipulative rhetoric, to be honest. And I feel that if we think about it objectively and we think about it in terms of preventing um, a lack of knowledge and understanding, then this is the best way to vote. Vote team proposition so that you will not be faced with people who are overworked, overwhelmed and over it. Thank you. something a little bit unprecedented in it's something we do do in debate night. Because of time constraints, normally the judges, me in this case, go away, talk about scores and we come to a conclusion. If anyone on these two debates would like to come and find me, I can give you feedback, I can give you your actual scores. But because of the time constraints, instead I'm going to do what we do in debate night, anyone that's there will know we to some of our competitions. But it's going to be up to you to decide who wins this debate. And how that happens is this. I'm going to point to prop and you are going to show your appreciation for prop in a minute with a round of applause and then I'm going to point to op and you're going to do the same thing and the loudest cheers is the winner okay so it's going to be you guys it's going to be you guys who decide it's true democracy in this room it's not going to be me that decides and it's not going to be our artificial intelligence that decides you guys are going to decide so we're going to go first we're going to start we're going to start with the team that proposed the motion. Can I have your round of applause for the team that proposed the motion, please? Now I'd like a round of applause for the team that opposed the motion. Thank you. 